Hey what's up guys on Patreon, this is Freaky Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial and this time I want to talk about spline attraction with the help of Explosure FX, okay? So basically we are building some beautiful splines here like these ones, alright? So something like a weaving effect with these trails. Then afterwards we emit particles from these points on these trails then we will have some explosion effects, some shock waves, so you can see it here and there. This one is attracting these particles and overall the effect is really crazy. So this is really cool to get some beautiful movement in these particles. And the cool thing is they are still keeping their trail, their shape along the spline, but they are just pushed apart. And I think you can do so many cool effects with this technique, okay? So I really love it. Maybe we can, for example, let's see, get rid of the particles just for a second. Now you can see we advect these splines and this by itself already looks just amazing, okay? So you get some really nice behavior here, like this is so cool, okay? And this is so cool that I just had the feeling I need to share it with you, okay? So let's just start with a new scene, I would say. All right, so first we will start to build this weaving pattern here, like these strands with um, these um, twisting and curling weaving trails, however you want to call it, okay? So let's just build this one, okay? So let's go to a new file. And I would say first we create a helix. Let's make this one to a straight spline, so put it to 700. This is just a shortcut to get a straight spline into your scene. All right, and then I would say we want to put this one to a cloner. Okay, now we have three of them. I guess we want to switch this one to linear and hmm, how about 10? And how about 70, for example? I will just rotate this one down, something like that. Maybe 100, okay, that's even better. So I just want to emit particles from down here, maybe from a rectangle, and then they will go to the closest spline to their position and follow it and will climb up, okay? And then we will get these beautiful weaving strands. I hope my English is uh, correct in that case. I just decided to go to my helix and scale it up a little bit to have more space here. Okay, something like that. That's cool. So now I would say I just grab an emitter here place it around the middle here, okay. Let's rotate it 90 degrees so it is firing these particles up. I just eyeball this one, make it bigger, something like that. Okay, that's cool. So I would just place it here and now our particles will fly up. Okay, that's perfect. But I think I just want to have one initial shot of particles and maybe 250. I just want to increase the speed and give it a small variation just ever so slightly. Okay, I'm not sure if we need to play with different radii, but therefore I would just vary it a little bit. And that seems to be working for me. Something that I learned in the Insidium training file is that they went to the retiming and set this one, for example, to 50 to easily make it faster or slower, okay? So I'm not sure about the use case because obviously you could also increase the speed, for example, but I guess this is just another option to retime your particles after you set everything up. And um, if you want to use it, then just do it, okay? Now, I think these particles, they need to have trails. So give me some X particle trail element here. And this is already working, so I think we don't have to change anything here, but I just want to make the behavior of these trails more interesting, okay? And therefore, I learned to use another new object, which is called the trail deformer, all right? So put this one in your trail, and now you can see something strange is going on because we have a formula in our y-axis. So these particles, uh, sorry, these trails are only deformed in one axis, but we don't want to use a formula for that, but we want to use some noise, okay? So just throw a noise into your x-axis, for example, and I think this is way too detailed, so put it to 2000, for example. And now you have to decide how big is this displacement. Let's see. Okay, let's put this one to 10. I didn't fully understand the mix value so far, but I think when you just intensify this one, you will get more of this displacement 100. So 
with this one this is really crazy so just tone it down to 15 for example okay let's see when i decrease this one okay then this also gets smaller but i want to keep it at 100 but i think the noise is too detailed so put it up to something around this value okay put it to 10 that's better for me so now i will just duplicate this noise put it in the y-axis and let's see do i want to have the same values here yes maybe of course you can vary this one or oh, 15 now it's too crazy so put it to 7 yes i think i like this one let's see when i put this one to 5000 yeah that's also interesting so I kind of like it, but I want to make this even more interesting. So if you go to the spline, you can change the behavior along your spline length, okay? So now, slowly this will fade in and you will get this additional deformation over time. And I think that just looks amazing and will make it even more interesting, okay? So let's keep it like that. And now I think it is time to make these particles, these trails, follow the nearest spline of these ones okay of these straight splines so we get this weaving pattern okay and therefore i would say you just grab yourself a flow field all right make this one as big as you need it don't waste too much of the space because this is intensive to calculate so just be sure you put it around your scene something like that okay cool and now you already have a random effect inside of it. So I guess this will go crazy. Okay, but that's not exactly what we want. I think I just want to put this to 5% and I want to combine it with a two spline. Okay, now if we drag our straight spline into this field, this should work. So I just go to the cloner here I make it editable. Select all of these splines, right click and say connect objects and delete. So now this one should be inside of this field all right so put it there and hopefully this will work okay i guess maybe the cell size needs to be need to be reduced a little bit to get more detail let's see how this is looking i'm pretty much underwhelmed here so maybe the strength is too weak put this one to 30 interesting interesting so it's not fully working so maybe we need to have a bigger distance here i'm not sure so i try to figure this out while i'm going okay so it has to do with the distance but now this is getting really crazy so maybe just put this one to 60 let me try it again okay something isn't working here yes and it seems like a couple of particles they are just not close enough to our splines here so you know what an easy fix would be to just make this one smaller more tight here let's see how this is looking okay that's already better okay but now i think this is way too dense here so let's go back to the flow field and decrease the strength maybe to 10 let me check this once more all right and i think i like this one way better so this is working but my particles are too slow so just go to the retiming put this one back to 100 let me see it again hmm, okay okay something like that i will put it to 70 and let me check it once more okay so somehow it is working but i'm not totally convinced about it okay so let me check it once more go to the flow field maybe the strength should be five percent that's better i think this is a little bit more loose but i like it so this is working for me i think we can make the distance a bit bigger so these particles will also be catched by the flow field all right and i think now slowly i'm satisfied with it but i don't like how all of them are on the same line here so maybe i will just temporarily deactivate the flow field and let's think about how we can give it more variation in the y-axis so i guess the answer would be a turbulence factor okay but we want to have the turbulence only in the y-axis 
let's see put this one to 50 i guess now this will be crazy okay that's way too intense so put it to 20 check it once more okay that's still really intense maybe i also will decrease the scale and we'll put this one to 10 let me check it once more okay so now we have more variation in the y-axis and i think this will look better when we combine it with the flow field so let me see it once more okay so now some of these trends like this one are faster than the other ones i guess i want to even increase the strength here check it once more and i think i like it i also like how some of them are loose and will go to another direction so this is cool you have to figure out how to set the right blending mode here because right now i think this random which is beneath it won't have any effect here so let's see when i put this one to 100 randomness i think this will be completely no <laughs> okay i'm telling uh, something wrong so let's put this one back to five and i think oh i'm sorry the random strength it's not this value this is the value the strength of the flow field but the random has a strength of 100 here okay so when i put this one to a thousand even i guess we still won't see any random effect here let's put it to zero and still there will be no effect so put it back to 100 because i think we need to mix it with this blending mode so let's see what happens when i put this one to multiply let's see give me a thousand randomness okay obviously this is the wrong blending mode so put this one to add for example um i'm not exactly sure about it let's put it to max Okay, for some reason I can't see any effect. So maybe, maybe it's because I'm just stupid here today. So put it on top. And I think now when we set this one to add, now we should have this as an additional effect. So let's try it once more. All right, so now we are talking. Okay, so put this one to 100. Still way too strong. So put it to 10. Okay, some refreshing issue. Okay, so I think now we have an additional random effect of 20, uh, of 10, sorry. So put it to 20. Let's see. Okay, does it really work? Put it to 50. Yes, it is working. Okay, so now we have this additional random effect on it. And you can see this is like Photoshop. You just layer effects on top, okay? So whenever you like it, for example here, of course now these ones will leave the flow field and will go just crazy. So maybe you like the state, just go on your element and press C. All right, and now you could, for example, copy this one, go to a new file and paste it here okay so now we have this element here i think i just want to rotate it down and i guess this will be our foundation for the effect so now we will make some shock waves some explosions and then we just want to attract these trails all right so this will be exciting so let's continue in part two